Okay. All right. All right, I'll, I'll give you just reactions first. Okay. Okay, all right, now questions. Sound for questions. People are saying this is your best role since Sleuth and Alfie. Do you think so? You were born a Cockney. Did you find yourself slipping back into this during the making of Educating Rita? Your real name, Maurice Joseph Micklewhite. Is there still a lot of that in Michael Caine? Do you think there are any advantages to being born poor? I'll repeat that. Do you think there are any advantages to being born poor? You put on 30 pounds. You put on 30 pounds for this role. Isn't that kind of risky for your image? I understand you have completed a film which hasn't been released yet with Laurence Olivier Jigsaw. Did that just happen or did the two of you plan this reunion? What kind of a picture is Jigsaw? What is the story? Is Olivier pretty well these days? That should do it. Now that I've become remembered. <laughs> now you that David me? Lean now, has yeah, given yeah, all yeah, the instructions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Michael, I always look forward to seeing you, and we've done this several times before, but I don't think I have ever looked forward to it as much as this time because I saw Educating Rita uh, a week or so ago, and I think it is absolutely super, oh, super. That's great. <laughs> Wonderful. I do. I, I just love the movie, and I love your role. I was so moved. Um, Okay, that's the kind of man that if it weren't done well and right, you could say, oh, come on, he's his own worst enemy. Why yeah. doesn't he pull himself together? But I found myself just being, you know, really cheering you on and at times being moved practically to tears. Well, that, that was the idea of it. It, it was basically to show how two people who are basically losers could change each other to winners. And that's really what that story is about in, in a nutshell. And those characters, I mean, I know so many, uh, for the benefit of the audience, I play a drunken uh, uh, professor who's very sorry for himself and very self-pitying, who meets a girl who, who snaps him out of it, but not in a romantic way, funnily enough. And, and you meet so many of those, those people, but they always have something that if you can hit the trigger that started them on their downward path, you can change them round. What was the key for you, Michael? Well, the key was disillusionment with the students and, and, and the freshness of the, of the Rita character that came into his life, plus the fact that when he saw how he had managed to change her, which he considered for the worst, he suddenly realized how she had changed him for the better. It's, it's sort of Pygmalion, where, where Eliza changes Higgins, funnily enough. Yes, I, I, it, I it thought It works so in a sort of semi-reverse. <laughs> yes. Now, you know something about Cockney. I know quite a lot about Cockney. <laughs> I think I know everything about Cockney. <laughs> okay. Did you find yourself slipping back into that while you were making this film? No, not really, because I, I, I identified actually with, with, the, with the girl's part, because she's the working class person who's try, trying to make an upward movement, which is what I've always tried to do. And I was playing very much the university professor who would, of necessity, 
be a bourgeois, a middle class uh, um, background with a different kind of voice. But there was never, once you get into a role, you know, you don't um, change. There's nothing can, in my case anyway, then nothing slips or anything. And if, if it did, I'm sure Lewis would pick me up very quickly on it. There are people who are saying it's your best role since Alfie and Sleuth. Mm. Do you agree? I think it's the best role and the best performance I've ever done. That doesn't mean it's very good or anything. It just means it's the best I've ever done. It's, it's one of the reasons I'm out to publicize it. I've, I've come to New York to publicize it because it, it's not an obvious film. You know, it could very easily slip by unnoticed. And, and I think it has a great deal to say to a great many people in a great many different ways, funnily enough. And I think it's really worthwhile seeing, and I think it should be given its shot at, at, at some, some kind of recognition. You said you know everything about Cockney. I guess then you know everything about poor, too, don't you? I know everything about poor. Um, I, I know, well, let me put it another way. I know all I want to know about poor. <laughs> um, and um, I, I don't want to repeat the experience. You know, it's rather like measles. I hope you don't get it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, are I, there are there any advantages though to being born poor? Uh, yeah, you've got nowhere to go but up for a start. I mean, you can't lose. So you th that's why you very often find this. People say, oh, the, the children of the rich, you know, they have no spirit or you know they, they don't get on with things. It's because they're already there. What's what's to push you? Whereas if if you're born poor, you've got nowhere to go but up. And if you really want to move, you've got to work hard. And uh, that's always made me very ambitious. I hasten to add, not ruthless. I never sort of got to the top by walking over people or anything like that. It's usually the other way about, you know, but I, I mean, I, I, I suppose I am fairly tough coming from where I come from. And um, I've, I've always worked twice as hard as everybody else, really, out of probably a fear of going backwards to where I came from. You have made another film with Laurence Olivier, I understand. Yes, I did. I made a film called The Jigsaw Man, which is about uh, Philby, the British traitor who went to Moscow, who used to be the head of the British Secret Service when he was in actual fact a colonel in the KGB <laughs> for 20 years, which is typical of our Secret <laughs> Service. <laughs> um, I, we made this film, which w we ran into a lot of problems with it, but I mean, I think it's salvageable because we ran out of money halfway through and stopped and started and all that sort of thing. It was a very much a fly-by-night affair, and um, but it could it could be a good thriller. But it it will be coming out soon. I, I think they've managed to get it all all together, and it was a pleasure working with Larry again. Anyway, was this reunion a planned reunion or did it just happen? No, it ju it just happened out of the blue. Is as someone was free and then I was free. And and uh, I was always interested. I I don't play the real Philby. His name was Kim Philby, and, and it's not very well disguised because the character I play is Philip Kimberley. So you know, you know, a 45-year-old man who defects to Moscow is the head of the British Secret Service called Philip Kimberley is Kim Philby. But I don't know why they bothered. But I was always interested in the character because I was going to play his life story at one time. Is Olivier, is Olivier pretty well now? Yeah, he's fine. I saw him not long ago. He's in great shape. He seems to get, the more illnesses he has, the better he gets. I mean, it's quite inc incredible. You put on 30 pounds to play educating Rita. Yes. Yes, and you've lost it, though. I've, lo I've lost it. It's easier to gain it than lose it, I'll tell you that. But, but I, I, I put that on. I grew a rather scruffy beard and wore scruffy clothing and, and gained the 30 pounds so that there was no question that the affection for the two people that evolves out of their relationship would ever be anything sexual or immediate. I just wanted them to become fond of each other because they knew each other, rather than walking into a room and seeing each other and, and, and being turned on by each other the first time. Well, Michael, again, congratulations. It's just a really wonderful performance. Well, thank you very I much. I enjoyed it tremendously, and I hope Educating Reed is a big hit for everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you.